there, it's Erin from littleselflearning.com. And today I'm gonna to talk with you all about word chains. We're gonna talk about what word chains are, how we can make them easier or more difficult depending on our students' levels, how we can use them in the classroom to help promote reading and spelling. And I'm also going to give you a bonus tip at the end of how to make them super challenging for your little ones who are ready for something more and it helps develop their vocabulary as well. So let's dive in. A word chain is an activity where a teacher has pre-prepared a list of words that they're going to want the students to spell. And these words differ by one phoneme only. So a phoneme is a sound in a word. It's an individual sound. It's the smallest unit of speech sound there is. As a teacher, you are going to think about how you want to start with one word and you're going to have the students change one sound in that word to create a new word. And then they're going to change one sound in that word to create a new word and so on and so on. So that's the chain. It's a chain of words that differ just by one sound only. For our purposes, I'm really gonna be focusing on VC and CVC words. So vowel consonant is VC and consonant vowel consonant CVC because those are the words, especially for our littlest learners, preschool, pre-K and kindergarten. Those are the words we wanna use because the letters sort of play by the rules. They're sort of acting accordingly. They represent the sounds that we expect them to represent. We know that letters can represent lots of different sounds. Sometimes letters can be combined with another letter to represent a sound. There is all sorts of things we can do with letters. But for our littlest learners, they have just learned the consonant sounds and they've learned the short vowel sounds. And now they need to know how those sounds can go together in words. So that's why we really wanna focus on VC and CVC words when we are starting with these word chains with our littlest learners. So I'm gonna link the video down below that I did all about VC and CVC words so you can see what I'm talking about. So for these word chains that I'm going to give you some examples of today, we're gonna to focus on CVC words and we can make these more difficult or less difficult depending on which sound we change in the CVC word. So if we wanna change the initial sound, the first sound, that is gonna be the easiest for our kids to be able to hear the difference and figure out what the new word is. Then if they can change the first initial sound, we want them to be able to change the last sound, the ending sound in a word. That's a little bit more difficult for them. And finally, we want them to be able to change that middle sound, the vowel sound in the middle. That is gonna be the most difficult, the most complex. Those short vowels, those five short vowels that we teach our little ones, they are all formed really similarly and they sound really similar. So they're really hard to tell apart sometimes for our little ones. So that's why changing that middle sound is going to be the most difficult. So when you're doing a word chain with your little ones, you can either stick with changing all the same sound. So for example, all the words are just going to change the initial, the first sound or all the words are just going to change the ending or the last sound, or all the words are just going to change that middle short vowel sound. That's up to you. You can think about what sounds you've taught your little ones and you can focus just on those. So let's say you're really working on short vowel I and short vowel E. Maybe you make a word chain where you're just trading out those sounds. Maybe you change a few initial and final, but you're really focusing on that middle sound. That's up to you. The purpose is to help reinforce what your little ones have learned about sounds and the letters that represent those sounds while we're doing our word chain. If your little ones are ready, you can do a word chain where you're mixing up what sound you're changing. Maybe you start with the initial sound, then you change the ending sound, then you change the middle and you're kind of changing. That is a little bit more difficult because they're not sure which one you're gonna change. It's really great if you can choose words from a connected text that you're going to be reading or that you have read so that these words are being reinforced. Maybe they're gonna be reading a decodable book because you've been working on a certain phon um, phonics pattern or a vowel pattern. And so they're going to be reading a decodable book that's going to reinforce that. Maybe those are the words you choose for this word chain or at least some of them. That's really helpful as well. So you want this to be a purposeful activity where they are working with words, working with sounds, and then if you can, connecting it to a text that they're gonna be reading as well. 
I mentioned this before, but we're only changing one phoneme at a time. So be careful when you're preparing your list that you're not changing two phonemes at once. And another thing you wanna keep in mind is you want to keep the same pronunciation of the letters of the sound when you're doing your words. So as an example, if you had them write get, g, et, get, but then you wanted them to change from get to jam, which is still the letter G, G-E-M, but it changes the sound of the letter G. In get, it represents g, but in jam, it represents j. So you wouldn't want to do that because then you'd be changing the pronunciation. So keep it the same. If you're working with get, then whatever word comes next, if it's going to be another g word, it has to be g. It can't be a j, even if it's still spelled with the letter G. So it's about the sounds, not about the actual letters. And one other thing I wanted to mention is that nonsense words can totally be included in a word chain if you would like. Some people like to stick with real words, but nonsense words are just as helpful because you're seeing if they can understand the pattern, if they know their letters and sounds and how to put them together to create words. So just make sure that if you're choosing a nonsense word, that it's following a pattern that they have already learned. But those are great to throw in as well. Sometimes they're helpful too because they can bridge the gap. It might be hard to get from one word to the next and you might need a nonsense word to get you there. So word chains are one of the absolute best activities you can do with your kids because they promote phonemic awareness, they promote decoding, reading, and encoding, spelling, and they also promote orthographic mapping. That mental process where we're able to map the sounds onto letters so that our brains can remember how to read and how to spell these words. So there are two main ways to do a word chain and each way focuses on a different area of literacy. The first way is really going to be focusing on spelling, that encoding. If you want your little ones to really be focusing on spelling, you can do a word chain in this way. The second way is really going to be focusing on decoding or reading and really working on that phonemic awareness. If you want your little ones to focus on that area, more the phonemic awareness and reading, then you can do your word chain in that way. So I'm going to show you both examples so that you can decide which one you would like to try. Maybe you try both depending on the day or what your focus is for that day. So what I have here is just a whiteboard with magnetic letters. That way I can pull the letters down to spell the words. You can also have your little ones use a dry erase marker and actually write these words. You can also, what I really love to do is after they pull the word down and they spell it with their magnetic letters, I actually like to have them write it in their notebook. Here it is. Something like this, a primary journal. There's a space for a picture at the top, but then there are these great writing lines at the bottom. And so I use this with my students so that they can just keep all of their words in here. So that's another option as well. So let me just get my letters back up and we'll do a quick word chain. This word chain is going to be focusing on spelling, on encoding. So this is how I would say it to my students if I wanted to focus on spelling. I would start with my first word. Spell cat. Now we've already done a lot of phonemic awareness, a lot of pulling the sounds apart and blending them back together. So my little ones know cat, k, a, t. Then they can look at their letters. What letter represents k? What letter represents a? What letter represents t? Cat. All right. Now to focus on spelling, I would say change cat to cap. How do I spell cap? So I want to change one sound. They know that I want to change one sound from cat to cap. So they would have to figure out cat, cap. Oh, changing this last sound. P. What letter represents p? Letter P, cap. Now I would say change cap to sap. How do you spell sap? So they'd have to figure out, okay, cap, sap. I'm changing the first sound. What letter represents s? S, sap. 
I'll do one more. So then I would say, okay, change sap to sip. How do you spell sip? So they say, okay, sap, sip, i, i, I'm changing my vowel. What letter represents i? Letter I, sip. So now I've just done a word chain where I'm focusing on spelling. I'm focusing on that encoding. I am giving them a word and then I'm asking them to change that word into another word and they have to figure out which sound to change and what sound to change it to. Now, the second way I can use a word chain is to focus on the decoding, the reading and the phonemic awareness aspect of changing these words. So I would start again. I have put up my letters up here, but again, you can have them write it with a dry erase marker if you'd like, or write it in a notebook. I am gonna start by saying spell mop. So my little ones who have practiced lots of phonemic awareness, they know how to pull those sounds apart. Mm, ah, p, mop. They know it's mm, ah, p, mop. Okay, so this is how it's different. I'm gonna say, great, change Mm to t. What's your new word? Okay. Mm, where's my mm? Oh, it's right here. Change mm to t. What's my new word? Let's read it. T a p top. My new word is top. Great reading. See how it's focusing on reading? So it's a little bit different. Okay, so then I would say, okay, your word is top. Change ah to i. So they'd have to go, okay, where's the ah? Top ah. What letter represents i? Letter i. What's your new word? So now they have to read it. T, i, p, tip. Tip is my new word. So let's just do one more. So your word is tip. Change t to z. What's your new word? So they'd have to find the t and they'd have to change it to z. What represents z? Letter z. What's your word? Z, i, p, zip. Your new word is zip. So that's how it's a little bit different. If you can tell in the first example, I'm giving them a word and they have to spell it, which is why it's focusing on spelling. And in the second example, I'm telling them to change a sound and then they have to figure out what new word it is, which is why it's focusing on reading. So both of these are word chains. They're just two different focuses. It depends on if you want your little ones to be focusing on spelling or if you want them to be focusing on reading. So I'm gonna show you a video now of an example of a little preschooler who is doing this word chaining activity. And you'll see, I really like preschoolers to use magnetic letters so that they can build the word. But then I think it's also really important if your little ones are ready to write these words down in a notebook or on a paper so that at the end, they can read all of the words that they built, that they spelled so that they can see how those words are related to each other and how they've changed just by one phoneme. Plus it's great to have more reading practice in there. So that is an option as well. So let me show you the video and hopefully it's helpful for you to see this activity in action. Your first word is cat. Very nice. Now change one letter so that your new word is hat. Which letter would you change? H. Very nice. And C. C becomes H. What's your new word? Hat. Good. Now change one letter to change hat into hit. Very nice. What's your new word? Hit. Good. And now change one letter to change hit into hip. Very, hip. Very nice. All right, what's your first word? Ma. Very nice. Change m to t. What word do you have now? Top. Top. Change a to i. What's your new word? Tip. 
very nice reading. Change t to z. <laughs> What's your new word? Zip. Zip. Change i to a. <laughs> What's your new word? Zap. Nice job. Now I have one bonus word chain to share with you today. This is a challenge. This came from the book, A Fresh Look at Phonics, which I highly recommend. I will link it down below if you're interested. If you teach little ones how to read, then you definitely wanna check out this book. Lots of great strategies and ideas in here. Now this word chain activity that came from this book is also a vocabulary builder, and that's why it's so challenging. It's really gonna make your little ones think. So you start in the same way. So for example, spell the word cat. So you'd have your little one spell cat. And then you would say, change cat into a word that describes something that you wear on your head. So cat becomes something you wear on your head, but you can only change one sound. Cat becomes cap. And then you would say, okay, you have cap change one sound, and your new word is going to be something that you drink from. What's your new word? Cap becomes cup. So you see how this is a lot more challenging because they are actually coming up with the word on their own. They have to figure out which sound to change and they have to figure out how they would change that sound to create the word and it has to fit the definition that we're giving. So if you had cup, let's keep going. You would change cup into something that you put a Band-Aid on. Cup becomes cut. And then cut, you would say, change cut into something that you eat as a snack. Cut becomes nut, and so on and so on. So you see, this is a lot more challenging because they have to pull that vocabulary word from their brain and, and it has to fit the parameters that we're only changing one sound in the current word so that's that phonics work and we're also developing vocabulary. So that's a great challenge. Maybe that's something you could do whole group and see if anyone could get those. It's probably tricky for our preschool, pre-K and kindergarten littles, but I think it's really important to challenge them and see if maybe they can do it. So there you go. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope that you try using word chains either at home with your little one or in the classroom. I think this activity is one of the most powerful that you can do. Not only can you decide if you want to focus on spelling or reading, depending on how you give the directions, you can kind of emphasize one or the other, but you're also helping your little one with phonemic awareness, with orthographic mapping, with understanding the alphabetic principle, that these sounds are represented by letters and that they go together to make these words. So don't skip this activity. Definitely give it a try. If you have questions, you can comment down below or you can find me on my website, littleslovelearning.com. If you love videos like this, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up so that I know that these are the kinds of activities and videos that you'd like me to make so that I can support you while you are supporting your little ones learning how to read. Until the next video, I hope you have a great day. Bye.